The first step in any Spotfire analysis is to add data. There are two major types of data, static files like spreadsheets and text files, and govern sources like databases, web services, and streaming data. There are also two types of methods for using that data, in memory and in database. When loading data, static files are accessed on your local computer. Govern sources can be accessed directly in the analyst client or through the Spotfire server. If that data is embedded into Spotfire, it's considered in memory, which means that it's loaded into RAM and you'll have all the data visible as well as all transformations, aggregations, and expressions available to you. If you're working on a desktop analyst client, the memory and processing is done on your local computer. If the analysis has been used in the web player, the Spotfire server's memory and processor are used. For in-database, the data calculations aggregations are processed in the database itself. The results are then sent to Spotfire, either to the desktop client or the server environment for web users, wherever the analysis is being used. This is really useful with big data when you don't want to bog down the Spotfire server or your desktop hardware with loading and processing tons of data. Note there is no option for using in-database with local static files. Here in Spotfire, I add data by going to the plus icon. I can use the search at the top to find any existing data sets or sources in my library, or if I've used recent local files, they'll show up as well. If I hit the Browse Local File button, I can select various static files including spreadsheets, CSVs, text files, and other DXPs. When I choose a file, Spotfire looks for data tables in the source and gives me a review window. Notice here it automatically ignored data that appeared to be outside the main table in my spreadsheet. I can also turn off columns for import, change column names and data types, or select different sheets within my spreadsheet. When I hit OK, I see the data table to be imported, and I can change the name of the data table at the top. I can also decide if it should be merged with other data in my analysis or kept separate. Deciding this is covered in the next building block video on data tables. Now that the file data is brought into Spotfire memory, I can see in the data canvas workflow along with a preview of the data table and information about the source. The node at the far right is the final data table used in my Spotfire analysis, and the node at the far left is the data source itself. If needed, I can replace the entire data table using the button at the top, which will do a clean import and remove any existing transformations. Alternatively, I can use the replace data source on the source itself, which will retain all of the transformations on my data canvas. By clicking the load options on the data source, I can choose how I want Spotfire to store the data used in my analysis. If my audience will always have access to the source, I can select the Always New Data option, which will save no data inside the Spotfire DXP, therefore greatly reducing its file size. If I'm unsure if my audience will have access to the source, I can select New Data when possible, which will store the source data inside my Spotfire DXP and reload any new data whenever the source is available. The last option is for Store Data, in which Spotfire will save the data inside my DXP and only reload new data when I explicitly hit the Reload Data button and the source is available. In the Data Canvas, there's features for adding transformations and merging data, which we'll show in another video. Another option is to grab data from your clipboard. On this Wikipedia page, I'll copy this whole table to my clipboard. In Spotfire, I'll go to Other and Paste Data from Clipboard. The Wikipedia data is brought in accordingly. Note that this can be done with any tabular data, even spreadsheets and Word documents. What I just showed is bringing static data into my analysis through files and through my clipboard. For databases, you can use either connections or information links. Information links are datasets queried from databases and pre-configured for your use. They are accessed from your Spotfire library and always used in memory in an analysis. When you save your analysis to the library, other users with access to the information links are able to see the latest data, otherwise the data can be embedded into the DXP as a snapshot. To use pre-configured information links, go to Add Data and browse the library. Here you'll find information links that you have access to. After importing the information link, you'll see similar options in the Add Data flyout that you saw for static files. After adding the data, it's visible in your Data Canvas workflow and you also have similar options for data loading and transformations. We review connecting to databases through information links, but another option is through data connections, which can be done directly to an analyst client or through connections managed in your library. This option can be advanced for new users, so if you feel overwhelmed, feel free to skip this and come back another time. In Spotfire, going to Add Data and selecting Connect To, I see tons of Spotfire native connectors. I'll select this Microsoft SQL Server and New Connection. This asks for my SQL Server location and my login credentials. After entering this and connecting, I see all the databases available in that server. I'll select this AdventureWorks 2012 database. I now see all the tables, views, and stored procedures available in that database. I'll add this Stores with Addresses view. On the right, I can select from all the columns in this view. I can also right-click the data and add any related tables or preview the data. I can add as many tables as I want from the database, and I can go to Custom Query to write SQL statements for querying the data I've added. 
In the Add Data Flyout, there's again similar options for adding this data to other tables. However, now I see options for leaving this data external in database, importing it in memory, or using it on demand. Since I've already shown how to use in memory, I'll now show you in database. In the data canvas, I see the same information as my other examples, but some slight differences. First note, I cannot add any transformations to this data source. Although I have access to all data, in some visualizations I'm limited to 10,000 rows. If I add calculated columns, I see limited options for available functions because there are limitations on what the database source can process on its own. If I had instead chosen to import the data in memory, I would be able to add transformations, control data load settings, and I'd have a full range of functions and expressions since the actions are then processed by Spotfire in this scenario. A third option is on-demand data. For this, I can set parameters to limit the data being brought in. If I use the state province name, I can select the state name to restrict the data pulled in to only certain values. I can make this easier and more flexible for my users by using markings. Here I've created a small table separately that lists each state and uses a marking. When going to on-demand settings, I can choose marking as a selection parameter and choose load automatically. Now when I'm in my analysis, depending on what state I select, the associated granular data on stores are brought in on-demand from the database. This allows me to only store the smaller U.S. state's data table in the analysis, but have easy access to all the store's location data outside of my analysis. Note that this option is also available on information links. With data connections, every time I open my analysis, Spotfire will prompt me for my credentials to a database source. To prevent this, I can go to Data, Data Connection Properties, then in the Settings, there's a Credentials tab where I have the option to embed my credentials in the analysis. I can also save the connection to the library so other users can have access to this specific data connection and the associated data queries. In performance settings, I can choose to cache the data in the analysis and control how often this data in the analysis is refreshed. Note that these refreshes will hit your database source, so updating too much data too frequently can affect the performance of the database itself. For security and performance reasons, you may want to talk to the administrator of the database source and your Spotfire administrator to ensure you're using the appropriate connection credentials and the appropriate refresh frequencies. In my Add Data flyout, I can also see recently used connections and connections in this analysis. From here, I can find pre-saved connections in the library which may be provided by your Spotfire administrator or other users. As a last note, if you have any custom extensions like the OSI Pi connector, you can access them from the other section of Add Data.